quick on this. If you take these profile cylinders apart, those Euro profiles, you got to be careful when you pull them out, how the parts come out. Because you have a spring that's usually, uh, what they have is uh, on this one here, there's a dummy thumb turn on the inside. And then uh, that allows that full engagement onto the, the cam there. But you also have these pieces in here you got to watch out for. They fall apart. That's what you have. Let me see if I can get my flashlight here. Give me just a second. And so you'll have, uh, let's see if I can get a, you'll see the little cutouts at the very end there. That's for these pieces here that's going to sit. And let me see if I can turn my light on here a little bit better. Hard to get good lighting on this, and I hate to run it with not having good lighting. So what you're going to have is this piece here is going to drop in, but you got to have the spring in here first. So that will drop into there. Make sure it seats all the way into that hole and inside there. Let's see if I can do a little bit more. And then this piece here will go inside there and it's going to drop into that spring. But with the key also, you have to make sure, as I said, make sure you know where parts are when they come out. I didn't see this piece. It fell out of this and I kind of knew because you can see there's a wear mark that was rubbing on that. So that's pushing that in. So that's that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do it. It would just hit this piece here. So there's a rub mark right there. I can just barely see it, and I guess you can see it right there, that little circle. And so that will go there. So what I do is, and I don't have this pinned up right yet, I will just put it together like this. Hold that in, and you can just kind of slide in there, and that's where it is. And so that should allow engagement to that. And so sometimes you gotta move back to find that notch. So that's that. That should allow you to spin it. And what that does, those pieces in there, is that's what makes sure that this can spin when there's no key in there. Sorry if I'm moving around on the camera here. So that's that. And when the key's right, it should roll around in there. This is always kind of a weird one. And that's the other thing with this. The customer had a quick set keyway that he needed for his storm doors. Well, actually, I, I, it was a neuter bow, so it could have been wiser. I haven't really done the, the depth of space on it yet to figure out what it is. But I know, I mean, you pull it out, and I, and I originated a key by code to match what's existing. Is He has like eight locks on his house, and he just wanted these two profile cylinders to match his house. Well, they're not the same. And, and this works, you know, with this. I had to pin this up, but I couldn't pin it to the actual bidding of the, his... Uh, you know, say if it was like uh, 41553, which is it, then it wouldn't fit because although the spaces in between are the correct for a quick set to the first cut, it's not. And as you can see, and then hits that, that's going to be slightly off, and then it changes from there. So that lane right there is going to cause problems as it goes in there. And you can see that. I don't know if my black light will show it. I was pulling around trying to see the black light would show that too. Let me see here. Let me turn that light off. You can kind of see, maybe. It's hard to get a good view. So, actually, you know, probably Sharpie would be better for this. I just wanted to be able to. I looked in there and now I could see there's shiny where you don't have the marker. And so this could be a wiser keyway. You can see where nothing lines up. Between spaces, yeah, it's correct, but uh, to the first cut, it's not. So probably wiser, WR3, WR5 or something. I haven't really looked it up yet to figure it out, but, but I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to go ahead and pin it up to the combination of matches so I get a good shear line. So a quick set will work, and I know the cuts are not correct to the first cut, and after that, though, they, they do line up. But uh, and I've covered this before in another video. So just because a quick set key fits doesn't mean it's the correct one for that lock. And I may do another video or splice into this one. I haven't decided yet on uh, how this all goes together. You know, I had to use a special kit that I bought from uh, Peterson Manufacturing. Thank Peterson, I think. And that's how that works. 
So I might do a video on that, splice some into this, I'm not sure. So if you see this video here, then uh, hopefully uh, I've got another one with this being used coming up. Thanks for watching. Okay, so anyways, I had to hurry and rush and get those uh, profile cylinders put back together. And I ran into uh, the problem where uh, when I put the, the the big spring into the body, this is a different one here. I put the big spring all the way into the body up against the thumb turn that was on the back side. The uh, ejector pin, I don't know what you would call it, uh, the, the brass with the steel, the spring loaded, uh, it's like it's like a three piece combo that went inside that. Well, there was a, that button that you could tell how that was oriented when push up against that piece. I'll show you a picture right here. Anyways, that needed to be extended because uh, quick set key did not go far enough into that keyway. And so it wasn't a wiser keyway. I'm not sure what it exactly was. It was 150 thousandths between uh, the, the different cuts. But from the, the shoulder stop to the first cut was about 200 thousandths. And it didn't match anything that I had. So, uh, And I looked up in my Death and Space book. Uh, never did find it. And so I went ahead and... Uh, I just decided, well, I'll just put it back together. I, I made a spacer that fit into it, and it worked perfect. The only, the only reason I had to do that was because uh, they had uh, a whole bunch of defiant locks in their house, and um, they wanted uh, those two profile cylinders to match what they had. And so I, I made it. it. It worked. It's worked just fine. And, and the reason I had to put that piece in there was so that the key itself, when it bottomed out into that, it was pushing in better because as you can see in the video when I was showing it with the key working, it wasn't catching the back very good. It would catch at a certain point and then a certain point it wouldn't, but it had to actually push that little plunger in enough to where it would uh, fall into the recesses inside the lock itself. Anyways, I'm probably doing a lousy job explaining, but uh, I was going to go ahead and try to uh, pull up another profile cylinder and I think I'd use my last one. And so I was going to show you this and then I thought, well, I'll use this papaya's uh, Papi's, however you want to say it, you know, I'm probably butchering the, the name of it. I think these are like a Brazilian, uh, there's a Brazilian company in South America that, that makes these. Uh, I know that there's, Profile Cylinders have been around for uh, for a long time. I mean, in the old countries, you know, it seems like a lot of what they use, you know, in the UK and Europe, uh, places like that. Scandinavia, I know they, they use a uh, similar too. Uh, um, and I don't know what all the different types of locks they use uh, in all those different places. I watch a lot of videos like everyone else, and uh, I see a lot of them use the profiles. This is uh, the oval. The, this brand here, they make uh, a couple other profiles, and I'll put it right here too, picture of them. But they are different, you know, uh, compared to the Euro profile, which uh, has a thinner and on the bottom and then around. And they come in all the different sizes too. I have a place, a supplier down the street, it's called All About Doors. You can find a website. They carry all the multi-point lock stuff. Uh, more of a storm door stuff, but they carry all this stuff, too. And I, I can go get keys made. They'll even pin them up for you. But, you know, this brand here, I've not had much. Sure, you can re-key them. And I carry key blanks, you know, to, to cut, you know, blanks uh, for them. They run off a, uh, here's a, it's a PZ1 key. Uh, Keyway. They, I think they have a couple others. MTS, I think, is a is an MT5 MTS. I'll put a picture of that up into. Uh, that's another one that I never match that. You know, uh, same thing. And then uh, their pin diameters are uh, 93 thousandths, and then uh, diameter. So it's like when you look at them, they uh, they're itty bitty. They're like an American Master Lock pin diameter, itty bitty, and they. This one here actually had a lot of spools in it. You can see in there, a lot of spool pins. A few there and there. And so uh, I I thought, well, I'll go ahead and try to put this together. And, and you can, you know, uh, if you want to drill these out, uh, find a way to hammer them back in. I think I've heard people using, uh, you know, master wafers from a, a standard pin kit to, to fit into these. Uh, there's different ways to do it. You can drill and tap it. Uh, there's still a spring that's captured in there. I couldn't get out, so I didn't actually. When I was going to try to repin this, I've not figured out too that they are, of course, you know, because the pin diameter is different. This is not the same diameter as your standards, you know. That's your diameter, you know. Usually you have like a 490, uh, this is a 385, 386 plug diameter. 
half inch is usually around about what uh, most of the common cylinder plug diameters would be uh, 375 up you know is what I find them but uh, so this one here uh, yeah couldn't do it it just wouldn't work and then uh, when you get into the, the pinning shoe itself to try to do that it was kind of loose kind of I it was able to I was able to get that apart with that you know put that together it was tight very tight and so uh, I had to force my way in there and I have different types of these pinning shoes let me grab my other one I think I showed my other video uh, that I just had just a few minutes ago as you'll be seeing but that wouldn't even fit that that would fit the profile the euro profiles but you can buy these on eBay I can't remember the company but uh, they have in different configurations different profiles you can modify them a little bit this here you wouldn't want to modify it's the way it is. Now, I've seen videos where they have these 3D printed. Uh, how that works is uh, normally if you had uh, the correct diameter, which I don't, it's too small, but you would be able to drop that in there and then you would reach through there and you would uh, find a way to drop the pins. And then as you dropped each pin, you'd kind of use your finger to rotate it just a little bit to trap it. And then uh, you drop the next pin in and trap it. And you want to make sure your springs aren't sticking up. So I've seen where the sometimes they'll clip the springs, so it's just enough to get to the, you know, as you're looking here, then the top of the hole. It would actually be that bad on some of them, but yeah. Anyways, uh, you run into these uh, weird things as a locksmith, you'll come across a lot of these. I highly suggest, you know, if you just think that it's not worth uh, rekeying these, maybe this one here. You know, I would. It's one of those ones that uh, it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, your standard Euro profiles. But most Euro profiles, they, they'll have pins like these, which those two that I had uh, just in, that you've seen a little while ago in this video. One of them had uh, uh, hex uh, Allen heads, you know, put in there, threaded uh, Allen heads. And it was not a size I normally carry. When you pull up your standard and your uh, metric Allen wrenches, it's not a size that would be in that. It's just one of those weird sizes. And I had a little drawer full of little Allen wrenches. Uh, I keep uh, every, all these little tools that you get when you buy locks and stuff. Uh, I always have weird sizes that you'll find. And so I had one that fit. And so I was able to unscrew them. The other one, same brand, same manufacturer, everything. that went to the thinner of the, the storm doors. It, uh, it was pinned like this. And so I just had to use this kit to do it. And I didn't bother... Uh, with uh you know doing the they had the allen heads i just went ahead and did that from the top but uh the other one yeah i went ahead and i uh, used these and they were great it was uh, it took a little coordination to to figure out how that works i would even watch the videos i always do a little research before i get into something i don't really know what i'm doing i know how those work i played with them before but i don't do enough of them to worry about it and what i sometimes run into is a customer will want to know if I can make their profile cylinder match their other uh, locks and if it's this type here probably not just because the the sheer size of this will not fit into a profile cylinder I think I'll do that picture again where it shows uh, these lined up you can get profile cylinders in all kinds of different keyways Lowe's seem like they had the profile cylinders themselves in quick set keyway and Home Depot had them in the the Schlag keyway, the SC1 keyway. So you can mix and match, and you can find a way uh, to make them work that way. Uh, anyways, so that's what I wound up having to do. And uh, with this here, you know, I just I'm going to put it all in here and dump it in my bag and save it for for a rainy day. Maybe I'll play with that some other time. Not going to mess with it right now. And by the way, let me mention this. If you don't have that special kit like this, or you can't piece it together, you can get you either some windshield wiper blade, uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the tool guys, you know, or girls, uh, they all play around with the, the windshield wiper blades or the, you know, any of the flat steel. I think this came in my uh, fully bell saw. I had uh, the lever tension uh, spring, spring pin or spring uh, steel assortment and so you can actually bend that and that'll make yourself your own personal holder you know just don't do too tight of a bend or it'll break because it is kind of hardened and they work hard and really quick you can you only bend them once or twice and they're done the other thing i want to talk about is uh real quick lishy uh lishy uh, key cutters uh 
I, I was in my search for figuring out these, you know, the, the profile cylinders. You know, I've seen people talking about, you know, whether they're making keys for their uh, profile cylinders. And so they uh, they use these. Uh, I had one guy, he was using these to, to cut a key to make it fit. And so these are wonderful. You know, all the automotive guys know how these work. Uh, if you do with the flat cylinder or pen tumbler, uh, you know, if you, if you have pretty wide tolerances you can play with, these are pretty nice. Uh, but what I wanted to mention is in uh, my search for uh, the other info, I come across these, and these are cool. I like these. This is the, the ones by Klom, and some of the other people that are more into the, you know, the tool. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of different uh, groups out there, Sparrows. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them that uh, go to the other ones that are a little bit less mainstream. But they're you know excellent products you know I I Klom makes a lot of stuff and I'm not sponsored by anyone no I'm not advertising for them but this was just another uh, another way to to do something you know uh, and I've always been kind of leery about the design of this that I've heard people breaking these you know don't use them when it's cold uh, be careful on the thinner stuff but this design here it just seems more robust and I'm not saying these are better but I thought you know if I doesn't hurt to have a backup, and these have uh they you can see how they have that step just like the, the lishies do lishies they have that step and uh but this has a removable cutter and i don't know maybe you can flip it around uh you know if you had to you cut to where you re you know use this enough and it wore out maybe flip that upside down i'm not sure just thread it all the way through uh and then you have this here, maybe you can flip that. I, I don't know. It just that is kind of neat, you know, different design, and they feel comfortable. I mean, you see, I'll just take a bite out of this key. It doesn't mean anything to me. And so that feels good. Just find a different spot on here. Oh yeah, and they feel great. I mean, you feel like you can really take a bite out of it. But just wanted to show that off. Show that off. And uh, this is kind of my carry bag where my lishies. Came in, uh, my particular ones came in this case here, which I've already broke the, the hinge on, as you can see in my painter's tape. But uh, I just thought I'd show that. Anyways, uh, Klom, they have uh, their little pocket cut up, kind of a HPC offshoot of, uh, you know, the tubular ace type uh, keys uh, that I see people use. I have a hurdy-gurdy made by A1. And I actually had a job uh, yesterday, or uh, well, a couple days ago, it would've been real nice to have had uh, a different style. It's my hurdy-gurdy, it hurts my hands when you try to hold it in your hand. And then uh, I think I'll do a picture of what it looks like. And uh, the Ace one, I think it has a little bit easier way to hold it while you crank it. So anyways, I just thought I'd kind of talk about some of the different tools real quick. Well, I'll go ahead and get off here. Thank you for watching. I hope this didn't drag on too long and it bore the heck out of you. Uh, appreciate everyone watching. Uh, thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, you know, I just try to do things that are a little bit not as uh, common. But uh, sometimes, you know, it's repetitive, some of the stuff we talk about. And uh, one more thing, you know, I, I talk about all these uh, keys, uh, how you come across these. Let me just shake the camera around a little bit here. I bought this assortment from Foley Bellsaw years ago, and it was the commercial residential uh, key blank assortment. And I know there's some other companies out there. I'm not sure uh, CLK Supplies might have uh, their own version. I'll have to look. But uh, these are the most common key blanks that you'll use, you know, if you're starting off as a locksmith. And I don't do automotive. And this, these here actually, uh, PZ1, Popeyes. Peppies, how do you say it? 170. And so what I do is I'll go ahead and I just keep them. And so that's what I do. That's where I come up with all my key blanks. You know, I, I'll get close, you know. Toolbox, uh, they cover all the usuals, all the smaller yells, the big stuff, the APs. Uh, nationals, uh, yeah, you know, here's more of the yells. Hudson and Kennedy's, the toolboxes, the arrow quick sets, the different variations of slag, uh, you know, it covers all of them, most of them. And I'm not sure if, if Foley Bellsaw still offers this assortment, but it's like 10 each of 150 different types. And I've actually added a few, as you can see, 
150. I've added some in here too that you know that I've inherited from my other people's projects, but uh, I just want to show that. So consider getting you a key blank assortment that covers residential, commercial, and you'll find that it covers a heck of a lot. And then from there, you got a starting place because some of them, like the Yale One uh, or Yale uh, Y11s, the yeah, the IN8 is kind of a close match, almost the same thing. You'll find that uh, some of these will actually have a, you know, they're pretty darn close to, to working and so that's what I'll find here so anyways that's the last thing I want to show and I appreciate you guys watching talk to y'all later bye bye